There's a lengthy statement from President Obama, which, to my initial read, has no endorsement of the vice president, but says in part, President Biden pointed us away from four years of chaos, falsehood, and division that had characterized Donald Trump's administration. Through his best policies and example, Joe has reminded us of who we are at our best, a country committed to old-fashioned values like trust and honesty, kindness and hard work, a country that believes in democracy, rule of law, and accountability. It says later, we will be navigating uncharted waters in the days ahead, but I have extraordinary confidence that the leaders of our party will be able to create a process from which an outstanding nominee emerges. I believe that Joe Biden's vision of a generous, prosperous, and united America that provides opportunity for everyone will be on full display at the Democratic Convention in August, and I expect that every single one of us are prepared to carry that message of hope and progress forward into November and beyond. For now, Michelle and I just want to express our love and gratitude to Joe and Jill for leading us so ably and courageously during these perilous times and for their commitment to the ideals of freedom and equality this country is founded on. No so, endorsement there of the vice president. All right, guys, so all of you should be aware that Joe Biden has dropped out of the race after the Democrats have successfully completed part one of the coup against the Biden administration because allegedly part two of the coup has yet to begin, but it seems as if it could begin pretty soon here as Kamala Harris was endorsed by Joe Biden. Now, a lot of people are trying to stop the infighting. They're trying to stop the bleeding of the Democrat Party by saying that, no, 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 no. We have to rally around Kamala because Kamala is our best chance of beating Trump. However, uh, it seems as if the Democrat Party elite do not believe that. OK, in fact, you have Biden mega donors balking at contributing to Kamala, suggesting that she's too far left to beat Trump. Trump. So they're saying, look, we have the same problems that we had with Joe Biden. We just don't know if she can actually win, right? We don't want to burn our money on fire contributing to somebody that is too far left to win. Now, this statement is fascinating for multiple reasons, not just because it's true, because it is true. She is too far left, right? Um, and I hope people recognize that. She's a progressive lunatic. She's right in there with the same camp of Bernie Sanders, the Elizabeth Warrens, the progressive caucus, the squad. Kamala is right in that lane, okay? Now, um, what's also fascinating about this is that you have Obama and some of the elite power brokers in the Democrat Party like Chuck Schumer, Hakeem Jeffries, and Nancy Pelosi, they have refused to endorse Kamala. Now, Hillary has endorsed Kamala, which could suggest that there is some sort of power struggle or confusion among the Democrat elites in regards to whether or not they believe that she should be the candidate or if there should be an open convention because that is what Obama seems to be suggesting. And now you have people like Vivek Ramaswamy who over a year ago correctly predicted and he kept saying this over and over and over again, right, that Joe Biden would not be the candidate, that they're going to replace Joe Biden. But he's also coming out and making a shocking prediction about Kamala Harris that kind of aligns with what the Democrat elites are kind of signaling about Kamala Harris, which is that Hey, she might not be the candidate either. And I want to talk about it, but before we get into it, we have to have a word from the sponsor of this video, Noble Gold. Are you worried about the future of the U.S. economy? With so much uncertainty in the air, it is natural to fret about the security of your retirement savings. However, there's one asset that stands the test of time, and that is gold. For centuries, gold has been a hedge against market volatility and economic instability. With a gold IRA from Noble Gold Investments, you can harness the power of precious metals in order to secure your financial future. By rolling over your existing IRA or 401k into a self-directed gold IRA, you can enjoy the potential for long-term growth and stability. Diversify your portfolio with a tangible asset that has real value. Setting up a gold IRA with Noble Gold Investments has never been easier with its streamlined process and expert guidance. This election year, do not let the volatility and uncertainty keep you up at night. Vote for the timeless safety of gold and silver in 2024. And Noble Gold Investments will give you up to 10 one ounce silver Trump coins or a 10 ounce silver american flag bar if you open a qualified account go to noblegoinvestments.com now that is noblegoinvestments.com and just remember there's a risk with every investment and there's no guarantee of any kind is now let's talk about the fact that they're not supporting 
Kamala Harris, the very same people that I would argue pushed Biden out. You know, it says a lot to me that, you know, you have the Obamas. We know that that Barack gave the the wink and the nod to George Clooney to write that New York Times op-ed. We know he's been working hard behind the scenes. We know that that he gave the okay to Schumer and Pelosi to do the things that they've been doing. And then all of those same voices are silent tonight. Now, the Congressional Black Caucus, very prominent voices within the Democratic Party, James Clyburn, others, they're supporting Kamala Harris. But they're the same group of people that didn't win out in this battle for Joe Biden to stay in. So who's going to win the next battle? So, look, I say this as somebody who a year ago predicted Joe was not going to be the nominee. I'm going to predict that Kamala Harris is not going to be the nominee either. And the reason is if they get one shot, they're going to take their absolute best shot that they can. Who is it? That's clearly not Kamala Who's Harris. That? This, well, look, I think, I think there's a lot of open possibilities. I would not write off the possibility that it ends up being Michelle Obama. She checks off the same identity politic boxes, and it's going to be somebody who's maybe above the fray that doesn't create the same kind of infighting that could debilitate oh, their so, party. So Barack the reality, Sean, is, though, is, is the Barack is the is yeah. is literally leading the charge, trying to keep his you know keeping plausible deniability, and then his own wife takes over. What do you call that? I think it's. I think you call it realism, Sean. The reality is. They're going to take their best shot. They waited till after the RNC convention. That timing is optimal for them because it gets closer and closer to the eventual election. They're going to drag this out, I predict, through the Democratic nomination convention at the DNC in late August. I think Michelle Obama is not off the table. But you know what our message is? And I know President Trump would agree with this as well. Our message to the Democrats is, you know what, put up the best possible ticket that you can. That'll be good for your party. It'll be good for the country. And it doesn't matter because we're still going to win because our vision for this country is still is the not stronger fair to one the country. All Americans. Yeah. So you see that you hear that. Now, I think the Vivek is on to something. Now, again, considering how correct he was in his last prediction, I think it is worth listening to him when it comes to this prediction, because his prediction seems to be in line with what we're seeing right now from the Democrat Party power brokers about how they really don't have that much faith in Kamala. Now, there's a couple of explanations for why Obama, Schumer, Pelosi, Hawking Jeffries, why they haven't endorsed Kamala Harris yet. It could be that they're trying to paint the illusion of a process, right? Because this is what Obama said in his letter. This is what they've stated that, hey, we need to go throughout a process to have Kamala earn the nomination, right? Whoever gets the nomination needs to earn it because it already looks bad, okay, that the Democrats staged the coup against Joe Biden. And then you have Kamala Harris, who's essentially the nominee by default because it looks like the Democrat power brokers, again, told Joe Biden that he couldn't run for president. Um, again, there's not very much democracy there. Okay, even though even though uh, Kamala was on the ticket with Joe Biden, voters still did not vote for her at the top of the ticket. Okay, I think voting for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris is different from voting for Kamala Harris and whoever she picks for vice president. Right. So you already have this very, very, very bad look. Uh, coming from the Democrat Party, showing that, hey, the Democrat Party isn't very democratic at all, right? In fact, it's an authoritarian party that is controlled by Barack Obama uh, with the help of some Democrat donors and elites, right? Everybody is seeing that the writing's on the wall, okay? The cat is out of the bag. The Democrat Party is not Democrat, right? There's nothing Democratic about the Democrat Party, right? So the lack of endorsements could be a way to create the illusion that, hey, Kamala Harris... Uh, didn't just get crowned as a nominee. She had to earn it. There was some type of democratic process in which everybody had to agree that, okay, Kamala is the best candidate. Again, it could be that, or it could simply be that, hey, these people really don't think that Kamala can beat Trump. And this is why they are withholding their endorsements. And maybe they're going to have some figure. I'm not sure if it's Michelle Obama, right? I doubt it's Michelle Obama, but who knows, okay? Crazy things have happened in 2024. I am not saying that it can't happen because honestly, the Michelle Obama scenario is the one scenario that I can think of in which if there's a contested convention, it won't be a complete disaster. And the reason why is because the so-called black bourgeoisie and the feminists, they will abandon Kamala Harris in a heartbeat for Michelle Obama, right? And they won't think twice about it, okay? If you're talking about a frictionless, DNC convention where you have a new nominee, if it's not Kamala, 
it has to be Michelle Obama. Michelle Obama is the only person that could do it in a way that will actually bring the Democrat Party together, right? There's nobody else that would do that because she's more authentically black than Kamala Harris, which is why black people won't care, okay, about Kamala Harris being skipped over. And also she's a woman, allegedly, right? So the people that will be complaining about, oh, well, you skipped over a woman and blah, blah, blah. Nope, they won't care about that either because Michelle Obama checks that box. And also, most importantly, you don't have any real policies to tie Michelle Obama to, so she would be a lot harder to attack for the Trump campaign. So I'm not saying it will be her. I think it's highly unlikely it will be her, but somebody okay, could emerge to challenge Kamala Harris, and that could be the person that the Democrat elites actually want. And that brings me to this video right here featuring Joe Manchin, in which there were sources, at least last night, saying that, hey, Joe Manchin is considering a presidential bid. Now, Joe Manchin this morning has come out and kind of pushed back against that a little bit, right, uh, by saying that, well, I'm investigating the process, but I really don't plan on running, right? He's not really definitively saying, I'm not running no matter what. He's kind of saying, well, I don't plan on running, but I also believe that Kamala Harris is too far left. And this is why I'm quote unquote exploring the process, right? This is what he said on CNN this morning. And I think that this interview is important because it gives you some insights in regards to what the people who are against Kamala are thinking, because there are a lot of people who are against Kamala, right? She seems to be getting a lot of endorsements now. But they, there also are a lot of people that are against Kamala behind closed doors. Well, Senator, are you running for president? Well, let me just put it this way. The calls and everything that's coming in is, uh, is not quite sure unless they see a process where they really are. Has things changed any at all? And a coordination and, uh, doesn't always basically produce, uh, I think, the, uh, the strongest, if you will, the strongest team. Very well, Kamala could be that person. And I think going through some sort of a process would have been very enlightening to everybody so i'm pursuing the uh the uh the process i really believe strongly along with i think it's uh, uh former president uh, obama and speaker nancy pelosi both think there should be a process they spoke out about that and you know you're going to find out on as number two you know you have your own views but you're basically part of that team what's her own views on some of these issues and it's going to be whether the border you know is going to be a hot contentious situation is anyone taking serious the debt that we have the educational opportunities or a lack of educational opportunities yeah. or student basically performance things of this sort these all need to be talked about and well i mean that's not what the media wants to talk about right that's not what democrats really want to talk about they want to make this about sexism racism bigotry hate i'm going to talk more about that later right but they're already coming out and trying to make kamala versus trump about black women right and bigotry right this is what they're trying to do okay um but again what you see here from joe manchin is is him saying that listen you know there are people behind closed doors that have questions about kamala and we need to go through a process because we got to make sure she's the strongest candidate now again i think that what joe manchin is saying here makes sense except that I think that would actually destroy the Democrat Party because, again, you have a significant section of the Democrat Party that believes that Kamala has to be the candidate because of her skin color uh, and her sex, right? This is what they believe. And any stepping over of Kamala, even if she loses fair and square, they probably will re revolt against the party because, again, <laughs> what they really care about are mascots, right? They want that, that black mascot in place, okay, to say that they're being represented. And if they don't get what they want, then, again, they're going to be upset, right? So... Outside of that, though, what he's saying in regards to the issues, Kamala's going to lose on the issues, right? That, that's the thing about these people. They're pretending that Republicans are melting down over Kamala. No, Republicans are simply calling out the hypocrisy of the Democrats who lectured us about democracy, but are showing us that they actually really don't give one damn about democracy at all, especially in their own party, right? Again, that, that's not the Republicans melting down over Kamala. Nobody's scared of Kamala because Kamala is going to lose on the issues. Look at Afghanistan. She was a disaster. She was the last person in the room. So, hell, we can say she made the decision. She's responsible, okay? Uh, look at the border. She was the border czar. Border wide open. This woman is an extreme progressive on illegal immigration. She thinks crossing the border is not a crime, right? Being an illegal immigrant does not make you a criminal. This is what she thinks. And it's stuff like that that is going to lose her the election, right? If, if we're talking about a policy conversation. But again, they don't want to talk about policy. 
What they really want to talk about is everything else. But the smart money and the Democrats know that, hey, you know, if it actually becomes a policy debate, Kamala can't win, right? She cannot win. Joe Manchin knows this. Obama probably knows this. Uh, again, the smart money in the Democrat Party, they know this. We seem to be basically co uh, people who are opposed to Donald Trump is thinking that's going to carry the day. It's not. People want issues. No, it's you not. You said, I'm it's pursuing not. the process. Are you going to... I'm just continuing to push this process. You're there's going to no, push the process. No, are you I, considering I running? I haven't. I, the people are pushing in that direction, and it's it's something if they're pushing that direction. I've said, let's pass the torch to a new generation. There's an awful lot of people that you've shown on the screen uh, that now they're considering as vice president. Nobody's been through a process knowing really where they stand. Joe Biden went through a process in 2020 against an awful lot of left parts of our party, and the party went with someone centrist that thought they could win. Are we in that same category right now well i mean it turns out biden was not a centrist he was the most progressive president that we've ever had <laughs> so uh that was a farce are we in a centrist category or are we in the far left category what well, you, your party is far left joe manchin right just accept the reality the party is far left okay but again what he's voicing here are the same concerns that some donors are voicing probably the same concerns that again the democrats elite uh have is that well maybe kamala is too far left. Now, again, we know the Democrat Party is a far left party, but you're not going to win any elections <laughs> overtly coming out with this far left agenda, right? So, again, that's what they're concerned about. That's what they're concerned about because right now, the, the main revolt against Democrats, right, Biden, is his policies. It's not just because he is, you know, mentally deteriorating. Had Biden actually had good policies, right, if he wasn't so progressive and Democrats weren't so cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, he may still be in office, right? People might not care that much, but it's because his policies are bad combined with what's happening to him upstairs. That is what got Biden out of the race. About this, Casey, I'm an independent now. 51% of people participating in, a, uh, in a, an electoral process are registered independents. Only 23% are registered Democrats. Only 25% are registered Republicans. If either side can't capture that middle, which is where the center of this country, where the common sense and, and you know, just they just want to tap it down a little bit and not push on to me, even though you think that's part of the policy and you're playing to the base. Is that where the country is? I don't think. Why is there 51 percent like me? How do they win back Democrats like me? Do you think you could win the nomination at a Democratic convention? It's almost impossible for anybody at this point in time once it's been anointed. First of all, I want to thank the president, President Biden. Uh, I've known him for a long time. I've considered him a friend, and I truly, I said with heavy heart yesterday, but here's a person that can put every minute of his re remaining uh, term towards doing the job of president, trying to bring peace in the Middle East, trying to make sure secure our position with Ukraine to defend itself and fight for the freedoms that we want them to have and they, they want and then make sure that we show with grace and dignity how you transfer power, superpower of the world. He can do all of that and have the greatest legacy. I thank him for everything he's done. I haven't always agreed, he knows that, but we've worked through our differences. I haven't worked with Kamala any at all, to be honest with you, so we'll see what happens. Do you consider being Kamala Harris's vice president? No. <laughs> no, I'm not a vice. It's a new generation. You don't want a 76-year-old vice president right now. Well, do we want a 76-year-old president? Well, if he feels like he's 50, maybe. Do you feel like you're 50? <laughs> Let me just say this. The process for the Democrats, try to win back that center. Joe Biden became president because the center believed that he was in the center. He always had been. But if, I if believe there's going to be a process, somebody's his... got to run against Kamala Harris. Is that going to be you? Well, I don't think that. I don't know. I just will see. We'll just okay, so this guy has said a bunch of different things on these networks about whether or not he's running. He's definitely, in my mind, considering, right? One thing I have learned throughout this whole process, don't listen to a word Democrats say in regards to what they're going to do, okay? Because they're lying, okay? They will lie to your face and then turn around and do the exact opposite of what they told you they were going to do. And then they want you to believe that, hey, they're trustworthy, right? <laughs> that they never lie about anything, except they lie all the time. So that being said, I have no clue what is about to happen, right? I personally think there is a decent chance that somebody could challenge Kamala. 
I definitely think that it says something right now that the Democrat elite aren't endorsing her. Because right now you would think that, you know, everybody just coming around Kamala and saying that she's the one, she has to take down uh, Trump. That would be the path of least resistance. However, again, I do think that there is a lot of people behind closed doors that believe that Kamala can't actually beat Trump. And I think that they're right. OK, I just think that if they go down the route of an open convention, the party is going to implode. Right. So, again, we're at a position where there's no real good options for Democrats. Um, if they stick with Kamala, I think she's going to get destroyed. Uh, if they move on for Kamala, I think the party is going to destroy itself. And that's currently where we're at at this point. Right. That's where we're at. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.